today we are going to talk about the vasculitis vasculitis means inflammation of vessels walls and walls of the vessels are inflamed we see a person is suffering with vasculitis now the most important point you should know about vasculitis is that there are so many types of vasculitis and there are so many mechanisms related with the vasculitis and different patients with different type of vasculitis have different clinical features. So before teaching you the specific types of vasculitis, I will talk a few words about general concept related with the vasculitis, right? Some general concepts. Again, how do you define vasculitis? Vasculitis is inflammation of wall of a vessel, right? Now, when we talk about vasculitis, these inflammations may produce different types of clinical presentations, clinical features of, general clinical features of vasculitis, right? I'm not going to the specific types of vasculitis. I'm just telling that if there are so many people you have suffering with vasculitis, what kind, what kind of clinical presentations will be there, right? Because it is an inflammatory condition, so it may produce some systemic effects like all severe inflammatory conditions, systemic effects of vasculitis, and there can be some, yes, local effects, depending upon which vessel is blocked or inflamed. Now, systemic effects of vasculitis will be manifested only in severe cases of vasculitis. Is that right? First we'll talk about the systemic effects. Actually, when I will teach you the systemic effects of vasculitis, you should develop the concept of systemic effects of infections and inflammations. Right? What are the systemic effects of uh, inflammations? Yes. Fever. Yeah, fever. Now my friend is going to tell me that how fever is produced. Mm -hmm. All of you know that whenever there is severe inflammations, person may develop fever. Is that right? For example, if my this finger is little injured, I may not develop fever. But if there's significant injury there, I may develop fever. So fever is one of the systemic manifestations of inflammatory conditions. Right? It is only one of them. Other are if there is severe inflammation and prolonged inflammation, patient may have fever, patient may have weight loss, patient may have malaise, patient may have increased fatigability, right? And patient may have anorexia, right? And generally in severe inflammations, patient have raised ESR, patient have raised level of C-reactive proteins. Now there's no fun in telling that these things specifically occur in vasculitis, no. All these things which I mentioned, these are the systemic manifestations of any significantly involving inflammatory situation. And a good doctor should know the mechanisms of all these things. Is that right? For example, we start with this thing. Let's suppose someone has severe vasculitis or severe inflammation at this part of the body. Let's suppose these are some cells which are destroyed due to any inflammatory process. Right, this inflammatory process may be immune mediated or it may be microbiological injury or it may be physical trauma or it may be radiation, any type of injury. Whenever it is significant injury producing significant degree of inflammatory response may eventually produce systemic effects of inflammation. Of course, in severe vasculitis, those effects will be produced. So what is the mechanism? Yes, please. My question is very simple. If I have, I have very severe injury to this tissue. If this tissue is vessel, we say there is vasculitis. If this tissue is lung, we may say there is pneumonia. If there is a severe tissue or infection in the bone marrow, we say there is osteomyelitis, right? So any type of severe condition or there are joints, there is rheumatoid arthritis. So any type of severe and significant inflammatory response produces fever. How? My question is to Mr. Essen. That's great. He was uh, loaded with the answer. That's great. What he is saying that whenever there is significant inflammation, it means a significant number of inflammatory cells are activated. 
Whenever there is significant inflammation, it means a significant number of inflammatory cells are activated. Right? Let's suppose in this particular example, we are taking a lot of neutrophils, right? And macrophages are activated, which are now now. You know, neutrophils and macrophages, all of them produce cytokines. And these cytokines, if they are in small concentration, in low concentration, they will produce some local actions. But if they are in higher concentration, if there is significant inflammation, lot of inflammatory cells are activated, they will produce lot of cytokines, like interleukins and tumor necrotic factor. For example, interleukin 1 and tumor necrotic factor, but many of them are also there, many more. Now, these actually these cytokines produced in the inflammatory area from the inflamm activated inflammatory cells uh, they jump into blood and they spread in the body through systemic circulation right cytokines do have their receptors in hypothalamus they do have their receptors in yes please hypothalamus you must be knowing hypothalamus is here right now this is hypothalamus and in the hypothalamic cells, neurons which have the receptors for interleukin 1 and tumor necrotic factor, those cells are activated by this. Is that right? Let's suppose I bring some neurons out. Let's suppose this is a, these are few cells, hypothalamic cells. Let's suppose here are some hypothalamic cells and they are having receptors for tumor necrotic factor or interleukin 1. When tumor necrotic factor or interleukin 1 will stimulate these cells, these cells, when they are activated by the cytokines, they start producing PGE2. What is this? Prostaglandin? Yes, E2. So prostaglandin E2 during inflammation is produced not only at the site of inflammation, of course prostaglandin is produced at the site of inflammation, but also inflammatory zone released cytokines go to the hypothalamus and produce local PGE2 within the hypothalamus. And this PGE2 stimulate the thermoregulatory center, right? And when thermoregulatory center is disturbed by PGE2, then those neurons, right, suppose these are the neurons which are acted upon by the PGE2, they produce the signals which will eventually lead to development of fever. So all this is happening up to this in the hypothalamus. Cytokines going in hypothalamus stimulating the specific cells and those cells produce locally PGE2 and that PGE2 stimulates special neuronal pathway which eventually bring about changes in your body temperature and your body temperature will go up. Okay, now who is going to tell me that how these neurons will bring the body temperature up? I mean this is something every doctor should know, isn't it? Every doctor, even a small kid knows that someone is sick if there is fever. But doctor should know more than that. The why fever is there? Yes. What these neurons will do? They will shout from the hypothalamus, please raise the temperature or what they will do? Yeah, actually to produce the fever, to produce the high temperature in the body, there should be two things. There should be excessive heat generation. Generation. Body should produce more heat and should lose less heat. Now, where are the he main heat generator in the body, the muscles? So hypothalamus activate the descending pathways which eventually go to the muscles and produce shivering in the muscles. So actually, when hypothalamus is uh, orchestrating, orchestrating the elevation in what body temperature, if hypothalamus has to bring the body temperature rapidly up, then it will give the stimuli right to the neurons, to the muscles to produce shivering. Shivering will produce more heat. Secondly, the second descending pathways from hypothalamus will go through autonomic neurons and they will produce vasoconstriction especially cutaneously. So what happens? That when vas vasoconstriction occur in cutaneous vessel, less blood is coming to the body surface. So whatever heat is being generated, is it coming to the body surface then? No, because it's, uh, blood brings the heat from the core part of the body to the superficial part of the body through its circulatory mechanisms. So less blood is going to the 
surface of the body so it means whatever heat is being produced can it be lost from the skin no so in this way hypothalamus orchestrate the increase in body temperature by producing the shivering and by producing cutaneous vessel constriction is that right this is the mechanism of fever so fever is one of the manifestation of vasculitis but actually this mechanism same is played everywhere that is why when you give non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs what they are doing they are inhibiting the enzymes you remember cyclooxygenase 2 they inhibit the enzymes which uh, produce pge2 so what really happens that those anti pyretic drug reduce the prostaglandin production in hypothalamus and uh, when prostaglandin is level to go down then instructions to the thermostat in the hypothalamus to elevate the temperature has disappeared so now central nervous system the temperature set point come down but body temperature is high so what body has to do bring the temperature down you know when the temperature come uh, how the hypothalamus bring the temperature down for example if you have high grade fever right and you take aspirin or some effective antipyretic temperature will rapidly go down of course one of the way that effective antipyretic pyretics work is they inhibit the concentration of pge2 right so naturally when pge2 level come down it means instruction to the thermostat to the or set, uh, temperature set point comes down but body temperature will be high right so it has to bring rapidly uh, body temperature down how it will bring the body temperature down number one it will produce vasodilation on this on the cutaneous vessel so that heat should be lost more effectively from the body surface and second activate the sweating sweating also helps the body to cool down so that if you are producing sweating and when air blows it takes away the heat are you understanding me right so hypothalamus knows how to take the temperature up and how to take the temperature down just yes, please what's your question um, is heat when you produce fever is it a, a biological a natural defense against an inflammatory process so why we are trying to inhibit the, the fever with medication if the body is trying to defend its own that's very good mr carlos dr carlos has come up with a very intelligent question he says that uh, uh, high temperature or fever is a defense mechanism of the body uh, right and uh, why we try to bring it down let me tell you first of all under what circumstances is it is defense actually it is a good defense not good defense rather i should say it's a very humble type of defense uh, against the bacteria because most of the bacteria which are pathogenic to human beings they best multiply at human temperature so what we really try to do that when microbes invade your body which a uh, hypothalamus takes your temperature up so that uh, temperature this is a very humble i think very miserable attempt to make the body environment hostile for the bacteria or virus right it doesn't work wonderfully it's a very humble effect right but uh, in some situations this fever is really not necessary for example in autoimmune diseases when inflammatory uh, reactions are there right fever develop that will not help us right then in the same way if you get trauma and after the trauma there are lot of cytokines and inflammation occur in your body and the body there is no fun in raising the body temperature right so actually first thing you have to remember that raising the temperature is not a very effective way to kill the microbes is that right but it adds severely to the patient symptomatology and if really someone has microbe for example bacteria we prefer to give him uh, antibiotic along with the antipyretics but of course the real defenses in the body are like t cells and antibodies and uh, b cells producing plasma cells producing antibodies or t helper cells of course we don't uh, we are very careful to suppress them right so fever is not the major defense against so many things but it produces one of the major symptom in many patients am i clear right so this is one thing that one of the systemic effect is production of fever secondly temperature goes up number 2 what is the other systemic effect can be produced in vasculitis or any inflammatory condition malaise, malaise. what is malaise Fairies. malaise is different than do you think when you are tired you say i'm having a malaise malaise is different than uh, 
actually look malaise is a you should really define it well don't tell me that malaise is tiredness you walk uh, five miles and then you feel tiredness do you say to your friends i'm feeling malaise now malaise is everyone knows a different thing i think uh, the best way to define malaise is feeling of being yes feeling of being not well that's it you don't know what's wrong with you but simply you don't feel well we say you are having malaise what is malaise feeling of being feeling as if you are not well that is it right so many times for example if you are going to develop very severe toothache right before that you develop malaise why because maybe a lot of pyrogens jump into blood and then they take the body temperature up and produce malaise malaise is produced by action in which part of the body cytokine is working on hypothalamus it is hypothalamus is responsible for producing the feeling of being well you know the emotional centers present in hypothalamus so they are also disturbed by cytokines right so malaise feeling not well not well physically right so there is then anorexia is also produced when uh, some children when they develop some severe inflammatory condition they don't they become anorexic even they don't uh, take the, the best of their uh, food right how anorexia is produced again these cytokines acting where again on hypothalamus which has the satiety center and which is having the hunger center hypothalamus has these centers and when uh, high levels of the cytokines disturb those centers right the feeling which is produced is called anorexia and you really you don't want you know you have not eaten well but still you don't want to eat right so anorexia so nausea and even sometimes uh, in very severe problems you may feel nausea but usually fever malaise anorexia is a common feature in acute inflammatory conditions and in chronic inflammatory conditions there is an added thing of systemic effect and that is yes that is weight loss how the weight loss is produced in chronic inflammatory conditions yes for example in tuberculosis people become bony skinny weight loss is there in cancerous situation you know patient who are having cancer they may have weight loss don't tell me that because cancer is adding multiplying cell it's getting to adding to the weight no it usually cancer leads to weight loss how come again these cytokines you know for weight also there's a set point in hypothalamus that is disturbed right and that uh, initiates the catabolism in the uh, you can say catabolism in the body proteins and fats that produces weight loss am i right